Hey, welcome back you guys. So today I want to share with you one of the most important parts on your skateboard that most people that aren't in the know will never talk about. And it's something that took me a long time to figure out too. And that is the space between your bolts and where your nose and tail starts to kick up. The flat space to be very specific. So some people talk of it as being the fingers of flat because it's just kind of an easy way to measure it. And this specific board is one of the best ones I've had to illustrate it in a while because it has a very pronounced difference. So right here, it has about two fingers. But if we flip it around and look at the tail, it easily has three. So the flat space right here is about three quarters of an inch wider than it is on the nose. To oversimplify it, what it does is it makes it easier to step down on the tail and lift up the nose of the board. Whereas the nose having less fingers of flat makes it a little bit harder to lift up the nose than the tail. So when you pop off the nose, it feels heavier. When you pop off the tail, it's gonna feel way lighter because of all that extra room. On this board, it's an almost, and it actually is a little bit compounded because even the angles of the kicks are different. So let's look at those because it factors in a bit. So the angle of the nose on this board is about 21 degrees, bang on right now while the angle of the tail is only 17.7. .7. So it's two degrees less, roughly. Next, let's look at the angle that the board gets when you snap on it. So right over the truck, that is 33 degrees on the tail, and it is 34.3 degrees. So it's just a little over one degree difference, but that's not the really surprising part. The really surprising part for me on this board was the axle height when you pop it. So this is hard to measure and the ground has to be pretty flat, which it probably isn't, so I'll do my best. But when you pop off the tail, it's roughly just over 10 inches, 10 and 1 8 to the axle center off the tail. And when you go off the nose, it is 10 and 3 quarters. So we're looking at five eighths of an inch like that's quite a big distance your axle gets this much higher up on the nose where i noticed this the most at first was when i would step down on my board and then to grab it i'd be like i felt like i kept coming up short to grab my board because it wasn't going up as high as i'm used to the first thing you're going to notice on a board like this is that it's way easier to tip tack it just lifts up very easily the second thing you're going to notice is that it's very easy to pop an ollie. It takes very little effort, but you might notice that it's not coming up to your front foot as quickly as you're used to. So with the nose being so easy to hold up with such a mellow tail, there's the obvious low hanging fruit. Like it makes manuals a lot easier for sure. Even if you land in there sloppy, you can still readjust and save most of your manuals, at least in my case. So the thing that really caught me by surprise was how much easier it made mini ramp skating. So one thing you guys should know is this is a 14 inch wheelbase, which is a little bit tighter than someone of my height and weight would usually skate. So it can make the board feel a bit squirrely. Yet on these venture lows, I felt super connected to the coping. And the fact that Tic Tacs are easier made it really easy for me to navigate this kind of tight transition. So, you know, everything was easier because even like dipping Smith stalls or like getting into tail stalls, everything just like went right onto the coping very quickly and responsively. Most of the boards I've been skating have had steeper tails and it's been a lot harder to actually do the stuff like that on this tight little ramp. So that one definitely surprised me. To be able to actually skate a mini ramp comfortably on a small kind of tech setup, I enjoyed that. For ledges and flat bars, it's made it a breeze to hang on to things like feeble grinds because like what I haven't mentioned yet is there's these pockets. This flat space right here, this pocket, once you pinch your heel or toe in there to hold down a Smith or a feeble, it's like it just won't go anywhere that you don't want it to go. It stays exactly where you put it. Backsmiths on ledges, same thing, because there's all this space. What often happens to me on really steep boards on a backside smith is it just falls down all the time. But whenever I have a lot of fingers of flat and a nice pocket to put my toes into, I find I can hold that backsmith very easily. So there's a major benefit to this. And then the other thing it does is it makes getting onto semi-tall ledges actually quite easy with limitations because you remember I mentioned 
that your front truck doesn't actually get up that high. So as long as you're skating like a sort of medium sized ledge, it's actually really easy to get onto it. But as soon as you start trying to skate something really tall, then you're gonna find that you're starting to kind of whiff your pop and just not get up there as much. And that's where something like on a board with a lot of fingers of flat, riding say high trucks is gonna help you a lot. Venture highs would probably be amazing on this thing, but I'm not going down the madness route. I'm satisfied for the time being. So I definitely noticed a big advantage on curbs as well. It was way easier to kind of lift and get into my tricks on curbs. Regular slappies were marginally easier, but where I really found the benefit was in holding and popping out early on feebles. It was super easy. When I switched to my Clyde Singleton deck that had a steep and pointy and short tail, it was actually pretty hard. I kind of lost feebles. At least I could do the length of it and come out off the end, but I couldn't come off early anymore because that tail just couldn't give me the leverage I needed. Whereas this easy leverage on this tail, it was actually like, it's almost like a cheat code board if you wanna try and learn slappy feebles pop out early. So the benefits didn't end there. I found on ledges, it gave it a really easy, consistent slide. Having this nice flat space for your foot to rest on, all my front side and backside tail slides, I could sit on them longer and land them more consistently. Like it was kind of crazy. I also think that if you were gonna wanna try and do flip tricks out and stuff, that would for sure be a benefit because you're sitting on there so comfortably. One of the keys to doing a flip trick out of slides is you have to have a really slick, smooth ledge that doesn't knock your feet around. Otherwise you lose your footing by the time it comes time to pop. So for sure there would be an advantage with this board on tail slide flips out. Okay, before you think there's no downsides, let's have a little flat ground session. I saved the best for last. I'm just gonna do my basics. All regular footed tricks and then I'll do some nolly tricks. So all my switch and nolly will be off the steeper nose. All of my regular will be off the mellow tail. Let's see if you guys can figure out what the problem is here. Okay, so it's plain as day, I'm sure, to 90% of you, and it's no pop. And honestly, my switch wasn't that much better because, again, 14 inch wheelbase is a little bit small for somebody of my height. I like a 14 and a quarter. My last board was 14 and a quarter with Venture Lows, and I found everything was sucking up to my feet and I wasn't having any major problems. But yes, I personally couldn't ever actually ride this board because it's just way too many fingers of flat. While the benefits are a lot of fun, the fact that I just can't pop my tricks majorly outweighs that for me. However, I did find that if I actually have something to go over, I can pop my tricks. So skating with Adriano yesterday, we set up the bar to a you know, semi-comfortable height and it was pretty easy for me to like kick flip, backside flip, heel flip over it. But for whatever reason, I just found it very difficult to pop my flat ground the same way without something to go over. I'm sure you guys have experienced that. Okay, now really quickly, let's do that little board review that I was talking about. So this is an almost eight inch board. It is the full concave with steep kicks. All other boards seem to have a steep kick, whether it's mellow or meat or full concave. But yeah, this one is not too short, which is nice. So for a 14 inch wheelbase, it's still coming out at 31 and 5 eighths. They often come shorter than that. Now. That's part of the reason why things like kick flips and tray flips were really struggling for me is because it has that longer tail. Let's check the nose length. It is just under seven inches and the tail is six and a half. So it still has a nose that is way bigger than the tail. And the shape, man, I've been looking for this shape for a long time. Like blunt, but still popsicle. What's so crazy about this board is this is literally like the board I used to skate in the late 90s and early 2000s. I often skated Girl or Alien Workshop, but this was one of the other ones. And I haven't skated it, you know, since the last time I tried a Dwindle brand, which was the early 2000s. I often found the tails too mellow, but when I look at this board, this is like the exact shape that all those guys were riding back then. So like Krieger, Enrique Lorenzo, you know, all those guys, when I look at their boards in that old footage, it's like Venture Lows with this blunt shape and kind of mellow kicks with a lot of flat. 
So I absolutely love being on this. If they could make this a 14 and a quarter wheelbase by just simply pushing the back truck holes back a quarter inch, I bet you I could actually skate this board. I'd get more pop and I'd get the benefits of some of those fingers are flat still. It would just be a bit less, but in my opinion, perfect. Anyways, yeah, it's a classic shape. Um, the only difference was they were all way smaller than eight inch. I'm kind of loving it though, but I'm going to switch to an eight inch steep kick mellow concave blind board and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm just taking an opportunity to look at the dwindle concaves and stuff. I don't know what's happening with the brand and the riders and all that stuff but I really think I've been kind of sleeping on the boards. So anyways that's the mini review of the dwindle nice and straight across the rails. I don't know it's a good board. I kind of wish I tried them sooner because it definitely has some things I really like about it. Anyways that's about all I have to say. And on closing, I'm just gonna give you guys some of the footage from my first session on this board. You could see some of the things that were working, some of the things that weren't. Uh, I was just having fun on it and it was kind of a trip, but yeah, on to steeper and better things for me. Thanks for watching. Till the next one, you guys. Oh. That was the hardest one yet. I can do that better. Oh. 